And now I think I'm going to post something that's a little bit different than our usual fare. Uh, this fair, this video is going to be something, again, very different from what I usually post in our usual educational series. This video is going to be, um, actually a bit more humorous. Uh, so, this video is going to be called, uh, OSU Oddballs, and it's going to be focusing on some interesting items for sale at our local, uh, OSU, uh, surplus store. Now, uh, I should probably just mention, uh, just uh, briefly, I suppose, disclaimer, uh, when I am publishing this, I'm not speaking on behalf of anyone at Oregon State University, uh, any, at anyone at, or anyone at uh, OSU Surplus, etc. This is just me having fun a little bit uh, with uh, some things I've found online. Also, I would like to note that uh, overall, I'm actually a really big fan of OSU Surplus. There, I've gotten a lot of uh, useful things there myself. I recommend you check it out if you're looking for uh, any sort of uh, of the things they might carry, although uh, some of them, as we'll see, are a little bit interesting or perhaps questionable, but uh, yeah, so uh, you can see that here, and I think we'll begin. So if you're not familiar with the concept of a surplus store or a university or a government agency surplus store, uh, the way they operate is many state or uh, organizations and agencies and, and a uh, public university like Oregon State is an example of such. Uh, when they have items they no longer need, and they could be by an individual department, they could be by the university as a whole, um, when an item is no longer needed, they can't just throw it away unless it's literally garbage. If it's something that has any use or value still, they can't just, you know, if, um, if a professor, for example, doesn't need an item anymore, a uh, piece of lab equipment, etc., uh, they're not supposed to just, you know, take it to their house or sell it on eBay or something. Um, well, it depends on who owns it. If, if it is something owned by the university, I should just say that. I don't know all the ins and outs, but if it is a piece of property owned by the university, by state law, you can't just, you know, keep it even if you are the primary user of it. Um, if it's something owned by the university and it's no longer needed, you have to get rid of it through a certain set process. And that process is typically through a surplus agency or surplus department. And what that means, they uh, what these agencies do is they take property from various departments that are no longer needed, that are declared a surplus, they sort them, uh, they sort things that can be sold, things that can't be sold, and then they sell them, either in a public store or in a public auction, whatever it might be. And so, um, now OSU, they have a actual physical surplus store, but uh, unfortunately right now with the COVID situation, it is entirely closed down. However, one positive thing, and one especially positive thing for this video, is that they do have um, a online auction system run through the site Public Surplus. And most of the things on there are fairly humdrum, things like, you know, office furniture and some supplies. They'll sell things like, oh, I don't know, water bottles that, you know, get left behind from various classrooms and picked up and they need to get rid of. Uh, if you, you know, if somebody like abandons their bicycle on campus and it sits there for a year, they'll probably hold on to it for a while while it, you know, give you a chance to pick it up. But if you haven't picked it up in, you know, a year or something insane like that, they'll probably, but it'll probably eventually show up on the public surplus website. But uh, most universities, most big public universities anyway, have some version of this. Um, they're just uh, places to get rid of excess property. And again, most of the things on there are fairly humdrum and fairly ordi uh, ordinary, but sometimes you find a few uh, items on there that just make you uh, uh, really bat an eye or really uh, question the sanity of yourself and wonder if anyone really should be selling this. But uh, anyway, I guess we'll just go ahead and get into it. So, the first item I want to consider is auction 2618842, a lot of rifle cases. Hmm. So, what we have here is not one, not two, but 14 large rifle cases, about 50 inches long, 5 inch by 9 inch uh, in terms of area. And so here's some pictures, uh, that's fine, uh, just a whole bunch of, I mean, it's what's on the box, it's a bunch of rifle cases, that's pretty much it. So, um, I suppose what I find interesting about it is, I really just want to know the history and background of these. So, for example, um, you know, I, if if, uh, if firearms are your thing, that's fine. That, I'm not gonna get into that. That's that's per, you know that's personal choice, whatever. Second Amendment, that kind of thing. I just find it really interesting that a university has a lot of 14 rifle cases that they're trying to get rid of. See, I'm curious. Um, 
you know, where did these rifle cases come from? Where were the, where are the rifles that were in them? Um, was there an, another auction that I didn't see that had 14 rifles they were selling? Um, I'm also really curious about who might want to buy these. Is there like, is there somebody out there uh, around around the area who's like, man, I really have these all these rifles lying around, but I just wish I had some cases for them. I have, in fact, I have exactly 14 rifles. If only I had 14 rifle cases. Oh my God, this is my lucky day. So anyway, if you have some riflings, or if you have some rifles that need casing, OS Used Surplus has a deal for you. So for this next one, I have a few questions. Uh, first of all, have you ever watched the show Breaking Bad? I, I imagine many of my audience have. Have you ever watched Breaking Bad and thought, you know, that looks like a good idea? Or have you ever uh, watched Breaking Bad and, say, and said to yourself, you know, I'm a broke grad student, I really could use some extra money and you know, I'm, I'm pretty handy around a lab. Um, you know, I'm going to go ahead and give this a try. Well, if so, OSU Surplus has a deal for you. Okay, so what we have here, auction 26190049, is a lot of Erlenmeyer flasks. And when they say a lot, oh boy, do they mean a lot. They have a total of 108 uh, Erlenmeyer flasks, all for sale for a low, low price of $74, which it's a pretty amazing price for that much lab glassware. Like just one of those can be pretty expensive. And so they have six two liter ones, six one liter ones, 24 half liter, 24 quarter liter, and 48 50 milliliter uh, Erlenmeyer flasks. And look at these, they're all, you know, really nice lab glassware that you, you know, the type of thing you'd find in almost any kind of, um, in, in any kind of chem lab or research lab, but, you know, very common uh, things. Except, wait a minute, let me, let me zoom in here. Hmm, that's a lot of discoloration. Oh. These are used. Hmm. Yeah, they've been cleaned, but um, the reason I joke with the Breaking Bad reference is, well, is that I'm really asking who the target market for this is. Okay, so, um, let me think about who would want to buy a large amount of lab glassware. Um, I'm first, I try to think of like, okay, legitimate reasons some people would actually want this. Well, first of all, uh, home chemistry is a thing. There are you can find forms online of people who like to experiment with doing home chemistry, um, and you might do things like. Um, you might do things like, uh, you know, maybe make some, per make, people do things like making their own perfume, they'll make like essential oils, you know, they'll take a large samples of flowers of a certain type and, you know, boil them down, distill them and, you know, that sort of thing. Um, you know, or in some people just like creating chemicals as a hobby, that sort of thing, but uh, not those type of chemicals, but um, just, you know, chemicals as they like, they, they enjoy the chemistry itself. And I suppose this might, that actually might be legitimate for that. But even for those folks, 108 Erlenmeyer flasks is quite a lot. But the thing is, is that anybody who would use these in, for anything, who would want to use these for anything uh, like, for example, perfume or essential oils or things like that, they can't because these are not only used, they are of unknown provenance. What that means is we don't know where they came from. And um, OSU's probably, the, the, the OSU surplus probably also doesn't know where they came from. They probably don't even keep, I don't know, I don't even know if they keep track of that. They're, they're not required to, I'm sure. Ba the basic idea is that um, uh, when you use a piece of glassware, there can be contaminants left behind. It doesn't matter how thoroughly you clean something out, there can be little bits of material left behind and micro cracks and surface defects and things of that nature. And even with high quality glass, there can be little bits of contaminants left behind. And we have no idea where this glass came from. It could have, you know, it could have come from, maybe if it was used by like the food science department or whatever, I'm sure it'd be perfectly safe to use. Uh, it would likely be perfectly safe to use for, um, you know, producing even things that you're planning on eating or drinking. Um, but maybe it was used by, um, I don't know, maybe it was used by the agronomy department to test uh, new insecticides. Maybe it was used by the nuclear science department. Some of these were used to uh, hold uh, radioisotopes. Maybe these were, um, maybe there's some prof doing research in um, counterterrorism as a grant from the, um, uh, from Homeland Security and is doing research into uh, counterterrorism and was brewing up a batch of ricin in one of these. I don't know. Um, you don't know. 
who knows where this stuff came from. So you can't use it for anything that would be used for uh, any kind of human consumption. And even worse, okay, so the, the main primary, uh, like, realistically, the primary market for something like this, I would think, would be another lab, like another research lab. Maybe there is a private research lab, maybe there's um, some research lab out there that, you know, they can find a local buyer for it or something, and they will get a bunch, they need a lot of glassware, and they'll have it shipped uh, over to them or something like that. But the problem with this, again, is it's of unknown provenance. So if it's of unknown provenance and you're doing research, well, you can't really do any kind of, you know, published research with this, with this material because you don't know the provenance. So there could be some unknown, you can't really say for sure whether there is some sort of unknown contaminant in there that you don't know really how to remove because you didn't know it was ever in there in the first place. And so, again, you can't really do, you know, academic, you know, peer-reviewed research with this stuff because you don't know where it came from. And, uh, and hence the Raking Brad references, because the only people I can think of who would want 108 Erlenmeyer flasks um, of unknown provenance that they don't care where it came from is people literally built a brewing meth up in a trailer somewhere. <laughs> So um, hopefully that's not the case, or actually my favorite theory is that this is actually some sort of elaborate and uh, some sort of very elaborate sting operation by perhaps um, a Corvallis PD. Maybe there's, maybe like as soon as you play, maybe as soon as you place a bid for this, you're basically signing yourself up for a search warrant. I don't know. I just love the image of um, of you placing a bid on it, and then within twenty within the next twenty four hours, you don't knock on your door from the police saying we want to search your apartment or you search your house because you're clearly buying this for some un some horrible reason. <laughs> anyway, um, maybe if you can think of any legitimate use for a hundred and eight un uh, Erlenmeyer flasks of unknown provenance, feel free to leave them in the comments below. <laughs> next, uh, we have auction number two six two zero eight eight one an RS-10 extricator tool set. Now, even with the pictures, I actually had to Google this one, because this one's a little bit, uh, the pictures don't necessarily directly reveal what it is if you're not familiar with the tool. Um, I suppose anyone who's actually used one of these things could probably say instantly what it is. But um, I think I kind of find, I kind of interpret this one through sort of a dualistic lens. I think of this as like either sort of like angels or demons. I think either an angel or a demon would be interested in purchasing this in terms of personality. So what this is, is basically a, uh, a kit. And this is, when they say extricator, what they mean is a tool that will extricate a person from a vehicle. This is basically a Jaws of Life. This is a um, hydraulic piece of equipment that can be used to cut through and pry apart car door frames and just car frames in general. So if somebody is uh, trapped in a burning building, these can then be used to, uh, not, sorry, not a burning building, in a burning car or just trapped in a car in general and they need to get them out and get them to a hospital, they can, um, the fire department, uh, can remove them by basically literally prying the car apart in order to get access to them. So, um, but again, I keep coming back to who is the target mar market for this. Now, maybe there's a fire department out there that might want them. I don't necessarily see a fire department buying a really old car, you know, extricator set. Maybe, maybe there's some, someone, some department out there that's a little strapped for cash. So maybe, maybe that's a legitimate, um, Maybe that's a legitimate uh, buyer for this, but I just can't help, uh, I just, uh, when I see these, I just can't help but imagining some average Joe, not affiliated with any kind of a fire department or whatever, um, purchasing this. So I kind of classify this again as angels and demons. On the angel side, we have some guy with a real, either a prepper type or a severe, like, for a guy who really has a lot of like rescue fantasies so there's probably uh maybe a person is a huge prepper and wants to be prepared for every situation and they you know they read books about the zombie apocalypse and they have two years worth of flour stored in their basement and you know they got and they have you know uh 10 rifles and uh, you know 10,000 rounds of ammunition in the garage they're prepped for the apocalypse and then or maybe there's the uh maybe then there's the uh sort of this the rescue fantasy sort so they carry, um, they want to not only carry like 
um, you know, a spare tire and a car jack and a, maybe a winch and stuff to pull people out of ditches. No, they actually want to have the ability to, um, as they're going down the road, probably in their big old truck, and they see some a car burning literally on the side of the road and nobody else there, they want to be able to have the equipment in their truck that they can rip it up, they can pull it out, and literally themselves, not a fire department personnel, member of a fire department, just some random Joe, they want to be able to buy themselves, pull somebody out of a burning vehicle by literally prying their vehicle apart and they've been fantasizing about this and man now is their lucky day because now they can get the equipment and they can get it cheap that will allow them to do that so that's sort of the angel side of things and on the other side the devil side i'm imagining like some extremely malevolent car thief so there is someone who um See, normally, I'm not talking about a person who steals cars, I'm talking about a person who steals from cars. So, um, you know, maybe like stealing, people who steal like, uh, you know, the lowlifes who steal like car stereos, or, you know, steal laptops or, you know, ba book bags or things that people leave in their cars. Um, now, normally, most car thieves are bad enough when they'll destroy a window, they'll, you know, put, throw a rock through it, or throw a, I don't know, some sh uh, hard object through it. Uh, take a hammer to a window, whatever, and they'll smash a window, and that's uh, expensive enough to deal with this. No, this is for a particularly malevolent car thief that wants to not only get your stuff, but they are purposely getting it out for you. They purposely have it in for you, and they want to purposely give you as high a repair bill as possible, because they are not only going to destroy your car window, they are literally going to pry the car door, your car door, off of its hinges in order to get to that laptop bag or to your stereo that you have on your center console. So yes, it's uh, it's for, on the devil side of things, we have the particularly malevolent car thief who wants to uh, literally pry car doors open. So yes, if you're a car thief, and you want to be able to not only break car windows, but physically pry car doors open, OSD Used has a deal for you. Next, we have auction 2621648, a Percival Growth Chamber, uh, model 130BL. So, hmm, for those who don't know what this is, well, it is a, a chamber for growing things. So, uh, do you want to be able to grow things at home? Uh, do you want to be able to uh, grow some plants inside? Maybe some herbs like, uh, oh, I don't know, maybe things like thyme or rosemary or um, maybe some, let me be a little bit of garlic, whatever it might be. Uh, are you the opposite of a green thumb? Everything you touch just withers and dies? Well, um, this would be perfect for you because this is a perf this is a specialty piece of ag agronomy, or sorry, agronomy lab equipment that is designed to maintain exact conditions inside the chamber. So what it will do is maintain, uh, it has a series of settings on it, a series of dials and switches and things, that you can set the exact uh, temperature, humidity, and light level you want. And it's meant for, you know, it's mainly meant for, um, you know, repeatable lab experiments. But if you're a member of the general public, you might just use it to grow things in, an, if, in a reliable environment that you don't have to worry about them dying because it's too cold or too hot or not enough sun or too dry or too humid. You can dial in the exact conditions you want and it will grow just fine. So if you want to grow herbs or I suppose if you want to grow herb, and by that I of course mean uh, the type of herb that is uh, well, it's, uh, it is in fact legal in Oregon, um, but it is not legal in most states, so probably don't want to buy this if you're out of state, but, uh, yeah, and in terms of size, this is about the size of a mini fridge or so, but, yeah, it will, uh, work in any apartment, you might be able to hide it in a closet, um, but, um, anyway, yes, you, uh, if you, uh, want to get in on home growing, uh, for the low cost of $50 as of, as of the, uh, as of now, there are no bids on it, and the first bid is $50, and uh, if you want to get on that home-growing action, OSU Used has a deal for you. And finally tonight, I just want to ask you, how do you feel about bugs? You know, bugs. I'm not talking about computer viruses, I'm talking about the actual bugs. I'm talking about, you know, bugs, insects, roly-polies, cr creepy crawlies, all of those things. How, what do you feel about bugs, or how do you feel about bugs? Because if you like bugs, well, you know, I, I have a love-hate relationship with bugs. There are certainly some uh, bugs I absolutely love, especially those that, you know, are look nice or, you know, pollinate uh, new things. And, and then there are bugs that I just absolutely despise, like mosquitoes and cockroaches and wasps and other ones that are less than friendly. Um, so, but anyway, if you really, really like bugs, 
OSC surplus, oh boy, they have a deal of a lifetime for you. Because they have a one-of-a-kind specialty, well, probably not one-of-a-kind, but with auction number 2623085, they have an entomology cabinet. So, and this is not to be confused with an entom... This is, again, an entom entomology cabinet. Not to be confused with an etymology cabinet, which is, I guess, a specialty cabinet used for holding a, a large copy of, I guess, the Oxford English Dictionary or something. No, this is an entomology cabinet. This is specifically uh, a cabinet specifically designed for researchers and hobbyists uh, of in a various uh, insect uh, provenance, very in various insect specimens and topics and things. So, this is what it looks like on the outside. On the outside, it's fairly plain, just a big old metal box with a you know strong uh, locking door on it, that sort of thing. Originally manufactured by BioQuip, who's been manufacturing bug boxes since 1947, I suppose. Uh, located down in Gardena, California. Uh, I don't know if they're still around or not. They'd be curious to look up. But, uh, yeah, it's just a big old box for storing bugs. And, you know, if you open it up, what's inside is a series of drawers. Um, and they have, um, so they have, uh, you know, these are like uh, intended for uh, dried bug samples. The things that you, the kind of samples that you often see in like natural history museums. Um, and I suppose in science, some science labs, you know, like grade school science labs and things like that. But um, what I found particularly interesting is that whatever department had this before they sent it off to uh, the farm, uh, well, you, they include the key, isn't that nice? Um, they didn't clean it out first. This includes the bugs. So <laughs> they have a whole collection of various butterflies and moths and uh, that appears to be mosquitoes and houseflies and probably some wasps thrown in there and they have a whole whole lovely selection of bugs of random sorts that i suppose some prof at some point was researching but they just kind of got abandoned and now they're for sale and was used surplus so yes you can not only get the perfect cabinet to hold your bug collection but if you haven't started your bug collection you can get an advanced start on it with this large selection of pre-made pre-caught pre-selected choice insects uh, i assume of research caliber <laughs> so yes if you simply must have bugs for your uh collecting or other purposes or hobbyist purposes os used has a deal for you <laughs> Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this. This is just a bit of a lighthearted video. Um, something I whipped together on a Sunday night to have a little fun. Because uh, I apparently have no life. So anyway, if you'd like to look at any of these or other items, uh, feel free to check out the OSU's, uh, OSU OSU's uh, Public Surplus site. Just Google OSU's, that's one word, or OSU Public Surplus, and you can find links to their public auction site, etc. <laughs> and uh, I should probably j just briefly mention this video is not sponsored in any way or affiliated with them in any way. So this is just me poking fun at some of the more absurd items that I found for sale on the, the OSU public surplus, surplus website. So if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the uh, comments below. If not, we will uh, have the next uh, video in the wood design series out shortly. And for now, uh, please do not purchase anything for from OSU used for criminal purposes, uh, especially those Erlenmeyer flasks. Uh, Breaking Bad is, me is not meant to be an instructional video, in case you're not aware. So anyway, uh, again, uh, thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed this. Hope you found this a little bit entertaining, uh, and or at least weren't too uh, enraged by my uh, ignorance at scientific apparatus. Anyway, if you'd like to leave a comment again, please do so. Uh, be on the lookout for uh, future videos. And I suppose if, there, if I do get a lot of, if people like this, I'll, I might put out some more uh, versions of this in the future. Although probably not super regularly. Just whenever I see a, um, whenever I see a, a, a surplus of various humorous items on the surplus website. But uh, again, leave a comment, uh, if you like and subscribe if you if you wish. Um, if you if you want to support the channel. Uh, See the link below to our Patreon page. And regardless, thank you for watching, and as always, thank you.